good morning all of you this is mr r a kalel working as assistant professor in the department of chemistry in vivekanand college kolhapur today we have to discuss the next point of photochemistry that is basic laws of photochemistry see the photochemistry the whole fundamental principles that are considered as foundation of photochemical transformations are the two principle or two laws the, the first law of photochemistry is called grothers draper's law and the second law of photochemistry is called stark einstein law that is also called law of photochemical equivalence or law of principle of quantum activation that is the second law of photochemistry and the first law of photochemistry is the grothers draper's law grothers and draper's are the name of the two chemist the chemist theodor grothers and john w draper's they gives a puts the first law of photochemistry according to them the statement of the grothers draper's law is only those radiations which are absorbed by a reacting system or a by a reacting substance that are responsible or effective in producing a any photochemical changes means according to him according to these two chemists the light radiations which is absorbed by reacting system is only effective to carrying out the photochemical changes means suppose you just consider our substance or compound is there or our reacting material is there and if you want to carry out any photochemical reaction for that you have to expose that reacting material with a light if while exposing what happen some part of light is getting absorbed by a reacting system some part is getting transmitted some part is getting reflected some part is getting scattered by the substance or by the reacting system in that case according to these two chemist the light that is effective for carrying out the chemical changes only those light which is absorbed by the reacting system means the light which is reflected transmitted or scattered is not responsible for a photochemical transformation right the significance of this law says that see the photochemical change is takes place only due to absorption of radiation it is not takes place due to transmission of light or it is not takes place due to scattering of light or it is not takes place due to reflection of light it is only due to absorption of light now see according to this statement all those radiations which are absorbed by a system are responsible or effective in producing a chemical change but the significance of this law states that it is not like that all the absorbed radiations are effective in carrying out a chemical change means whole absorbed light is not effective whole absorbed light is not effective see this statement is little bit controversial but that, that we will discuss later on and also the another significance says that it is not like that just any absorbed radiations that are necessary for a chemical change means all absorbed light is not carrying out a chemical change also any fraction or any part of light is not carrying out a chemical change so why this because because everybody knows that the electromagnetic radiation is a source of energy right according to planck's equation the energy of light is given by e that is e equals to h nu see this e equals to h nu right so what happen when our, we are exposing our reaction system with a photons of or you can say with a light then what happen there is a interaction in between light and substance is takes place means there is a energy exchange is takes place in between our photon or a radiation and reacting substance now see while exchange is that means photon give its energy to the material photon give its material while giving that energy what happen the reacting system acquires the energy from the photon photon and it undergoes a reaction it goes to the higher energy level that is called you can say excited state and at the excited state see at the excited state everybody knows that any chemical reaction can't be takes place these molecules in the reacting system are steady or stable that this molecule has to move move and they has to collide with each other for collusion see for collusion it is necessary the molecule should have some energy for its motion or for its movement 
that energy is nothing but kinetic energy so obviously some energy of absorbed light is utilized to provide a kinetic energy of a molecule right and that kinetic energy of a molecule is necessary for carrying out this photochemical change or for any chemical change so this some energy is used to give or used to provide the kinetic energy to a reaction molecule hence not all absorbed energy is effective or is responsible for a chemical change some energy is used to for a giving a kinetic energy to the molecules also in some situation what happen the uh, reaction system absorbs the energy from the electromagnetic radiations it goes to the excited state at the excited state that reaction system carries its reaction it leads to formation of a product but after forming of a product there is a some excess energy is associated with the molecule which is at the excited state now see this excess of energy to attain the stability it is necessary to decrease the energy which is excess along with the molecules so for that what happen that molecule gives out that energy in the form of light that molecule gives that that energy in the form of light and see that light having sometimes frequency same as the frequency of absorbed light or lower some lower frequency than that of the absorbed light right this re emission of energy phenomena in the form of light it's called fluorescence right it is called fluorescence or sometimes it is you just heard the term about emission or our compound is highly emissive means what the absorbed energy is absorbed excess energy is evolved out in the form of light having same frequency or a lower frequency those phenomena is called fluorescence now see due to this kinetic energy of a molecule and fluorescence of a molecule not all the absorbed light is responsible for a carrying out a chemical change Th that whole explains about the grothes draper's law now the grothes draper's law statement is simple only those radiations which is absorbed by a reaction system is responsible or effective for carrying out a chemical change means the light which is reflected transmitted scattered is not responsible for a carrying out the chemical change and significance of this law says that the chemical photochemical change is observed only due to absorption of light that is the first significance second significance says that not all the absorbed light is responsible for a photochemical change some part of light is utilized for providing a kinetic energy to the molecule or some energy is used for fluorescence phenomena of that compound right also it is not like that only few part of light or a just any part of light is responsible right means you have 1000 rays out of that 1000 rays it is not like that only 10 rays can carries out the uh, photochemical change it's not like that right specific we can define that specific which 10 rays 10 electromagnetic uh, uh, light rays is carrying out the chemical change that is not a fix that is the significance of grothes draper's law now next we have to move towards the next basic fundamental or foundation of photochemistry that is stark einstein law it is it is also called a second law of photochemistry now see the stark einstein law is also called the principle of quantum activation or it is also known as a law of photochemical equivalence why equivalence because this law gives an equivalence about in between the absorbed light and the molecule that is reacted hence it is called law of photochemical equivalence now see the similar like a grothes and draper's the stark and einstein these two are these are the two different scientists and they gives his the law according to stark einstein law means this law states that each molecule each molecule of a reacting system absorbs a single photon or quantum of radiations in a primary photochemical process see i am repeating the statement each molecule of a light absorbing substance means of a reactant absorbs a single photon or a quantum of radiation in a primary photochemical processes now here primary photochemical processes means what means the photochemical processes which is takes place due to direct exposure of light see in photochemistry if we we come to know the mechanism then there are some steps in which in first step there is a direct exposure of light is there but in second step no as such a exposure is there right that so the first step is called primary photochemical processes and sometimes what happen for example you just consider our reactant a a plus h nu h nu is a light photon 
A plus H nu gives A star. That is the first step. First step. This is called primary photochemical process. And see in the second step what happened. This A star is reacts with another substance plus B. A star plus B it gives C. C is our final product. So obviously A star plus B gives C is a secondary photochemical processes. So this law states that see this law is concerned with only about a primary photochemical processes in which our reactant system is directly exposed with the light so each molecule absorbs a single photon or a quantum of radiation in a primary photochemical process that is the statement of stark einstein law for for example you just consider this is a this is our reactant right and which is undergoes a photochemical change a plus h nu h nu represents the energy of a photons that is a that is you can say light and it gives a star a star means the compound a is in the excited state right so energy of a single photon according to planck's equation energy of a photon is given by e equals to h nu everybody knows that equation e equals to h nu where h equals to planck's constant right and that is 6.625 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule second and nu nu is the frequency of absorbed photon right so the energy of one mole of a photon is called einstein the energy of one mole of a photon is called einstein and that is given by simply by multiplying avogadro's number to the energy of photon that is e equals to n into h nu where n is avogadro's number that is 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 per mole right now everybody knows that the definition of frequency in terms of wavelength that is nu equals to c by lambda so if you put this value of frequency this equation into the above equation we can get e equals to nh c upon lambda where c is the velocity of light and that is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second now see putting the value of n h and c in this equation means e equals to what is the value of n 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 per mole into 6.625 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule second into value of c is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second divided by lambda by putting this value and doing the calculations you can get e equals to 119620 upon lambda kilo joule per mole right so this by using this equation see by using this equation it is possible to determine the energy of radiation if you just know the wavelength of that radiation right if you have only wavelength of that light used then it is possible to determine energy or if you have energy of that light then it is possible to determine the wavelength also by using this equation see this is simple explanation of a law of photochemical equivalence you just keep in mind law of photochemical equivalence says that one molecule absorbs a one photon right and see if one molecule absorbs a one photon then obviously the quantum yield of that reaction should be unity the quantum yield we will discuss in the next video now see it is not like that the law of photochemical equivalence is valid for all the photochemical reactions see in some photochemical reaction what happen in some photochemical reaction the single molecule can absorbs a two or three photons also right for example if you are using a laser beam everybody knows that laser is highly intense source it is highly energetic source of electromagnetic radiation for a laser beam this law is not valid means one reacting molecule can absorbs two photons three photons or more photons and carries out the reactions right in that case see in that case the quantum yield of our compound is going to decreases similarly situation is like that if photons are highly energetic right then one or single photon can reacts two or three molecules also means see h nu plus 3a gives gives to a star that kind of reaction is also possible right and see it means that this law law of photochemical equivalence or law of principle of quantum activation is not applicable for all the photochemical reactions right the next thank you